time to tune in. Now the Nether Sports Center, it's a movement. Oh, but my brother Isaac, man, Washington football team, Washington Red Tails, Redskins, whatever you want to call them, man. He a diehard Washington fan through thick and thin, and he covers the team really well. What, how 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 did how did the Washington football team take and do this uh, NFL draft? Man, personally, I love this draft. Uh, you no, know, going into this draft, uh, we wanted to plug up some holes. We wanted to get at least you know at least one other dynamic receiver, at least one other. We wanted to get our left tackle uh, of the future, and we wanted to get a linebacker. Um, so for the first pick, uh, is somebody that somebody in this group called a reach, but I'm going to say why I don't think that's the case. And that's Jamin Davis, uh, linebacker from Kentucky. Now, you know, clearly there's, he's had one year of, uh, production. Um, but what I see is crazy untapped potential. Uh, and one thing about Ron, wanna, can I do you one better? I see, I see Luke, bro. I see, I'm, like, hey, this, I'm, 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 I'm going to get to it. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, one thing about Ron Rivera is when it comes to his draft boards, what he's shown is he wants he wants I, guys to have leadership qualities. He wants guys that are going to buy in. And the thing about Jamin Davis, before you get even to any of the athleticism, is, is you're going to fall in love with Jamin Davis, the man. Every coach he's had talks about this guy is a leader of men. Like, people will run through a wall for him. And then on top of that, just a twitched up guy. I mean, I mean, four, three, seven at six, four, two, Crazy. almost the uh, 40, or, excuse me, 42 inch vert, 11 foot broad jump, just explosive. And now you're placing that behind who I think is the best D line in the league. You know what I'm saying? He, he all you got to do is yeah. show up, you know, um, <laughs> real talk, you know, Rivera has coached, you know, Thomas Davis in his prime, Luke Keekley, like you said, uh, you know, John Beeson, um, Shaq Thompson, among other people. Mm. So he was exactly what he's looking for in a middle linebacker. And if that's the guy he wants, I am fine with it. Uh, I, this is a guy that I think is going to, when we look back in two, three years, Black Keekly. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, Ooh, I'm saying. he was the fourth rated uh, coverage linebacker in the league or in the in college in a power yeah. five. And that's something, that was our one weakness. That yeah, we needed. you guys were getting caught over the middle of the field. It, yeah. it, with Elliot uh, or Ezekiel Elliott, Saquon Barkley, you know what I'm saying, Miles Sanders. It's a lot of twitched up running backs that catch out of the backfield. And yep. uh, <laughs> the guys that we have, John Bostic. Yeah, I Bostic. Him. I think we had this conversation when I was on an episode with you. Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah. yeah. He'll hit downfield, but that guy is a stick when it comes to coverage. So yeah. I think like Jamin Davis, when you look at his tape when he played Florida, Shut Kyle Pitts down, ran with him step for step. That's yep. the kind of potential we're getting. I love that. Um, and then in the second round, we went and got Samuel Cosme, the tackle. Uh, yeah, Cosme, tackle from Texas. Um, another freak athlete. He's got mm-hmm. six, seven, 320, running a 4 8, 36 reps on the bench, 30 inch vert, which is amazing for somebody yeah. that size, and a 10 foot broad jump. Uh, that, I mean, that it goes along with the theme. This whole draft was about twitched up athletes. We got faster. This is a guy who has explosive tape, needs a lot of polish, but from what I'm hearing, it's not for lack of ability. It's more so the coaching at Texas for the O-line was horrible. So it's surprising that he did as good as he did uh, (laughs) with how he was being coached. And we have John Matsko, who's one of the best O-line coaches in the game. He's been doing it for over 30 years. He's going to take him and he's going to, you know, really hash the fundamentals and make him a technician. This is somebody that if it pans out, I really could see being, you know, a white Trent Williams because that the tape is there. Uh, he just needs to polish up some things. Um, then in the third, we got two picks from our, uh, from our trade for, or to you guys uh, for Trent Williams, my yeah. guy. I was gonna uh, say from, from last year. Yeah. 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 The first one we got, we got Brandon St. Juice, cornerback uh, Canadian from, Montreal, Le Quebecois. A little tidbit on him. He's actually really smart. He went to the University of uh, Michigan first, got his bachelor's in two years, graduate transferred to Minnesota, got his master's in another two years. So this guy is a very highly intelligent guy. Um, okay. He's tall and long. He's 6'3". He's got like 32, 33 inch arms, solid press corner. He shined in the senior bowl. And our, our DB coach, Chris Harris, that's Was somebody. There. 
he's going to be a defensive coordinator in the league probably in a year or two. And uh, he's going to coach that man up and he's got major upside. Uh, then the second pick. And your secondary was already nasty too. Yeah. No, I, I like him. I like, and he's got, yeah. cause this flex, he can play safety and corner. Uh, that's something we really like. Uh, the next pick in this draft is probably my favorite. Uh, that's Deami Brown. From I like Oste- it. Whew, man, his player comp is Terry yeah. McClure, oddly enough. Uh, he's an explosive, yeah. explosive down play, uh, downfield playmaker. Uh, um, he got him at two. I don't know why he was there. I, I don't, I don't get it. I'm very happy with it. He's going to fit in very nicely. You got him, Terry McLaurin on the other side. You got Curtis Samuel uh, going around. Uh, just defenses are going to have issues choosing where they want to get burned at. Um, the fourth round pick we got was John Bates, tight end from Boise State. Uh, I didn't really know too much about it when I did a deep dive. I actually kind of like this pick because uh, he's a dominant blocker. But he's not somebody that really caught many passes in college. His highest year was 22 receptions. But that was more a function of the system he was in rather than his ability. And then uh, I really think he's also stepping into his own as a pass catcher. So there's a lot of uh, potential there. And Pete Honer, who's coached Vernon Davis, Greg Olson, Delaney Walker, he got Logan Thomas to have a career you know, revitalization last year. He's going to coach that man up. And uh, we need it a blocking tight end but you know this is even better if he can if we can get some something out of the receiving end as well um in the fifth round we picked up Derek Forrest safety from Cincinnati punishing downhill hitter in the run game uh center fielder special teams ace uh needs a little bit of polish but again coach Harris is gonna coach that up and we uh we didn't have a sixth round pick but then we traded with the Eagles we gave them next year's fifth and picked up a sixth and seventh and with the uh, with the sixth round pick, we got a goofy pick, but something I like. Took Cameron Cheeseman, a long snapper from Michigan. Mm. Uh, he's arguably the best long snapper in college, or was. Uh, a very smart guy. He's been accepted in the dental school. You know, long snappers are always goofy. Um, so it's something that I thought was pretty cool. But it's something that if it hits, you know, you got a 10, 15 year starter. So I like that because we let go of our long snapper, Nick Sunberg. So this is perfect. Uh, then these next three picks, I, I really liked. Um, uh, we got William Bradley King, defensive end from Baylor, athletic freak, another guy with upside. Uh, he's kind of a poor man's Chase Young. Uh, he plays a very similar game. I mean, not too many people are Chase Young, but he's somebody that models his game after that, somebody we can definitely mold. And then this guy another person that has no business being available here. Uh, that's Shaka Tony defensive end from Penn state. Uh, him. He's a beast. Insane, insane, insane upside. He had a second round grade. I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, maybe some new information, whatever, but I think he's someone in that kind of, he kind of fell under the shadow of like Michael Parsons and Jason Owe over there at Penn state. But he's a guy that in his own right is a, crazy athlete 4 5 40 39 inch vert uh if you look at his tape man he he's got some of the best bend of any of the edge rushers in this draft um very similar to like a, a jalen phillips light in my opinion when you look at their tape so to get him in the seventh round that's stupid value so i i love that and then uh with our final pick of the draft we got dax milne i think is milney uh receiver from byu uh he was Actually, Zach Wilson's number one target. Uh, when I see the tape, I see a great route runner. I see, you know, he's a great pass catcher, a contested pass catcher, and he has upside. He, I, I see him as a very similar to Adam Humphreys. Um, they kind of play the same exact game, so I think he's someone that'll that'll work. And then there are two guys. One guy we got as an undrafted free agent, and then another guy that we picked up earlier in the offseason. But we picked up Jared Patterson. Uh, running back from Buffalo as an undrafted free agent. That's somebody I think is going to get in and contribute, right? He's probably going to take Peyton Barber's roster spot. Him and uh, Antonio Gibson are going to be very fun to watch. Yeah, as you, well. you, you, you and I were talking uh, last night, I believe it was. I don't know what it is about Buffalo, University of Buffalo, but they 
seems every year in the draft they, they crank out some gems, man. Some really oh, yeah. good prospects. They they doing something up there, man. It's the Niagara Falls water or something. But uh, <laughs> another guy that we got, uh, this is somebody that we got about a month and a half ago, mm-hmm. uh, was prior to the draft. Uh, Sammy Reyes, tight end. Uh, he is originally from Chile, played basketball at Tulane. Um, never played the game of football in his life. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you this, 6'7", 265, 4640, mm-hmm. 31 bench presses of 225 and a 40-inch vert. Mm-hmm. When, you look, when you look at this guy, I mean Kyle I'm a, Pitts who? Kyle Pitts who? Yeah, I'm, when you look at this guy, he looks like the main character in like a Latin romance novel. Like it's not fair. That's not the guy that you want to like bring your girl around. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yes. Um He's got it. If you can ever take a chance again, his name is Sammy Reyes. Check out his story. It's an amazing story. The guy came from Chile when he was on NFL Network right now, actually. Oh, yeah. Amazing story. This guy came, made it out that mud. And he's somebody that. One, if it doesn't work out, you know, it's just the guy that you sign in the offseason. Everybody's no worse for the wiser. But if it does work out and you find a twitched up Antonio Gates, <laughs> Tony Gonzalez, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a guy that has a basketball background. And when you look at his basketball highlights, this dude got ups. Like, he will bang on you. Like, I, I like him. And, again, he's getting coached by Pete Honer, uh, arguably the best tight end coach in the, in the league. So he's going to definitely, you know, take this, sit this young man down, teach him the nuance of the game. And he's someone that I really feel like could be a star if he just picks the game of football up. You know, it's hard. It's hard to pick the game up at this level. It's damn near impossible. But I just based on his story, his drive and determination, I'm not I'm not going to doubt him. And I and I believe in him. So um, with that being said, I really like this draft. I uh, I would give us a B plus. I would give us an A only because we didn't get a quarterback. But. As Ron Rivera said, there are two ways to build a team or a couple ways to skin a cat. One, you can get your guy and then build a team around him. But then by the time you build the team around him, your guy's coming off his rookie contract. Now you have to pay him. And it's, it's another thing. Or you can build the team. And then once you're comfortable in that team, then you go out and get your guy. And so, I. So question. So what you're trying to say is that Aaron Rodgers is going to be a Washington football team player. Hey, who knows, <laughs> man? <laughs> or Deshaun Watson. Think, uh, you know, I'm fine with Deshaun Watson. You know, some people are deviants. That's fine. Everybody's a deviant sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's more than deviant, bro. No, no, I'm, I'm completely kidding. Please don't demonetize us. Um, but no, I uh, I really like the way the team's being built, and uh, we're you know we're at least two deep at every position. I, I say B plus. Yeah, I, man. A hey, A hey, Doug. I love I love. It hurts me to say I do like I did like their draft. I'll give them a B, and this is why because the reason I said John Man Davis was a reach, I get the team they have, but JOK was on the board, and we understand why JOK fell. But I think JOK is going to be a better pro than John Man Davis. And, and again, Ron Rivera is a phenomenal coach, great line. Like that defense is ridiculous. So he's going to whoever whatever linebacker they drafted is going to clean up because that D line is insane, right? Like that D line is ridiculous. But I think. Um, JOK had a better upside. Samuel Cosme, I think, was a still. I like that pick. Uh, Diamond Brown, uh, I, I, he terrorized the ACC. Dude had multiple thousand yard seasons. I think the only thing, again, I like him, but me and you talked about this the other day, Isaac. I just think you guys need like one good size outside receiver because you guys got McLaurin, you got uh, Samuels, but you you need you need another you get you need a big receiver. Those guys are like six foot one five eleven. So it's like you, you I feel like you guys needed a big outside threat, right? But Dynamy Brown is going to be able to take the top off, and those two are going to be able to work a lot underneath. And um, getting Shaka Tony and William William Bradley King is just like the rich get richer. Like <laughs> those those like what do you need them for? You can, I mean, like you don't you don't need them. Like the Broncos needed one of them to develop because we always have one at the end. But like. I just thought the rich got richer in that situation. And then you guys getting Patterson from Buffalo as an undrafted free agent, which I don't know why he wasn't drafted. But I, I, the fact that y'all drafted a long snapper in the in the in the sixth round, that's like drafting a kicker in the third round, in my opinion, bro. Like yeah, you no, it was, a, 
That didn't I make any sense to me. And they this, traded their feet, they traded a fifth round pick from last year to trade up to take the long snap. That made no sense. No, no. So we gave Philly our fifth next year, which I'm pretty sure we'll get back uh, for the sixth and seventh. But no, I agree that whenever you draft a long snapper, even if it's in the seventh, it's just goofy. It feels it's like when you tie in the NFL, like you feel a little dirty. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to Jamin Davis, I'm going to give pushback. I think he's going to have a far greater career simply because he's the size. JOK, he's like 205. And we needed a middle linebacker. That's not going to hold up as a middle linebacker. He's very versatile. I don't he's think he's, he's like two, he's like 220. No, he's 205. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. When you actually get it. But either way, he's not big enough, I don't think, for the middle linebacker spot. I think uh, Jamin is just a little bit better in that regard for what we want to do. Not a knock on JOK. I think that's a solid player. But I, I really like Davis. And I feel like Rivera likes him uh, to be the captain of that, the middle of that defense. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, I I still don't understand why Shaka Tony was there. So he's I was six like, foot two. Six two for an edge guy? That's small. That's uh, the reason you. That's the reason you drop. He's gonna have to transition to outside linebacker. That's fine, because uh, I mean he's gonna he's got Chase Young and Montez Sweat in front of him. So I think I, as a rotational piece, because uh, I think a lot of people wanted us to go back and re-sign Ryan Kerrigan after the draft. I don't know if that's even still a thing anymore because, like you said, the rich get richer. We got these two guys who I think, along with uh, Bradley King, that are just gonna be the perfect rotational pieces, so that we can just rotate guys in and out someone's going to be coming at you uh they're gonna hit you in the mouth so i mean this defense is gonna be fun i really like what we're doing on offense and i i get what you're saying mike about having a big receiver but at the same time i feel like a lot of it is scheme based as well because i can understand if we had a bunch of six foot guys that ran like four fives but you these are we have a guy that runs a four three five and a four three one in in a McLaurin and Samuels and guys that get separation. Uh, So it's a little unique for us because oftentimes it's one or the other. No one had a lot of people don't have elite or elite separation ability and elite speed. Uh, There's just a handful of guys that do. So I think adding Diami Brown to that. um, And with our scheme, it's kind of more of a middle out scheme. So, I mean, we have Logan Thomas, who's six, six and he takes a lot of those targets. So it's not, as big of a need because either way someone's going to be open downfield you have to pick your poison and we got a quarterback like it's like you said dr jekyll and mr hyde but he's someone that's i think is he i could easily see him have a little bit of a mini revitalization of his career because he's gotten a little bit better uh in here and honestly when he was in miami i don't know if miami should have made the quarterback switch when they did but you know things happen because I think if he kept playing, you would have lived with what you got, but I feel like they would have made the playoffs. I could have seen like two more games, one for Miami. So I'm really glad with Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, and I fully believe we'll probably trade up and get our guy next year. Um, and then we still have, you know, White Vic, man, <laughs> Tyler Haneke mm-hmm. as the backup, and he's somebody that I really believe in as well. So I, this team now, there's no glaring weaknesses anymore. Everything is has come to fruition. Now it's about just, you know, getting the best guy and getting that quarterback and killing the Eagles. It, it now, it's, now it's about winning your division. Oh, that's it. That's happened. It's about, it's about winning your division because I'm the NFC least like there needs to be a clear cut. There needs to be a clear cut winner. Not like barely somebody just barely as the next man out. Like, and I'm looking, I'm honestly, I'm looking at Washington to be that team that's beaten on the rest of their division because yeah. Dallas has been the shiny object for a long time. They look good, but they don't play good. So I'm Correct. really counting on Washington to step up and assert themselves in that division. I love what Ron Rivera is doing there. I'm I'm high key all the way pissed off about Jamin Davis uh, because he had his pro day and then everybody knew about him. I was hoping he was just going to fly under the radar. And then you know uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think. I think this magic, he's not going to have to do what he did in Miami. I don't think he's going to have to play as much hero ball. Exactly. Um, just because I think offensively, there's, there's a better set of weapons in Washington. And I think the defense is, is just as complimentary. So, um, and then who did you guys get for your running back last year? I, can't, I cannot remember his name. What's, what's the dude's name? 
Antonio Gibson. That was yeah. another player. Uh, he's a, that, he, 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 he's yeah. a problem. Yeah, and that's another player. Was a, a fun fact, he only had 33 carries in college. So when we picked him up in the third round last year, a lot of people called him a reach. Like, why are you getting this guy? He don't even, he don't even run the ball. Top 10 running back in the league before he got injured. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Thing I, trust I think he this, got the juice, bro. One thing I trust with this coaching staff is they'll take guys that have not yet realized their potential and coach them up to see that. So that's why I'm really pumped about the Davis, the Cosme pick, uh, and the and the two seventh round picks as well. The jam, the John Bates pick. It's a lot of untapped potential. I'm excited to see how Reyes does. That dude from Chile, man. Um, mm-hmm. Again, just just um, just, just just to take and reiterate, y'all go online. Type what was what was his first name again? Uh, Samis Reyes. Okay, so yeah, it's like S A M I S and then Reyes. Yeah, the guy has an amazing story. Uh, and, and then of course you're seeing a surge of uh, American football in Latin America. You go on Facebook. I mean, there's groups in in the country of Mexico. Uh, not just uh, you would think all oh, Raiders, Cowboys, but no man. There's like Dolphins fans and Packers fans and Giants fans. Like it's really and diverse. That's, that's something that's very near to my heart because me myself. I am a dual citizen. I am from the country of Panama. And uh, let me uh, tell you, man, there's a lot of untapped athletic electric potential in Latin America that the world just doesn't know about. And so you know, when you see guys like this that, you know, have a chance to you know step up in that stage, it opens the door for more for more people to get seen. And that, that really just excites me, man. Isaac, so what you're saying is you needed a Ron Rivera, not an Archie Malloy? Mm. Hit the nail on the head, buddy. Hit the nail. <laughs> awesome, hey. awesome. Well, hey guys. Oh, good. All right, y'all. We, Two we, things I need you to do, Isaac. I need, I need, uh, I need you guys to win the division, and then I need y'all to pick a name. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time, isn't it, it? I like it though, because it's like, damn, we got beat by a team. Ain't got, even got a name. It hurts in a different sense, and I'm kind of starting to feel uh, mess with it a little bit. But uh, no, nah, I, I kind of like Red Wolves, man. I, it's growing on me. I want that one. It ain't happening. But. DC Sentinels. DC, DC Sentinels remain nameless. <laughs> Shane Fowler. <Fowl. laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Hey, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, for everybody who took and came came out at uh, time of their busy, you know, took time of their busy schedules to take and come on the show. I appreciate every single last one of you. All y'all are welcome back any single time on the touchdown with Doug Smith. You guys know we always going to take and get it in. Uh, I'm going to have a few guys had to take and leave early, but I'm going to make sure I have everybody who has a show. Uh, the links down below in the description of each one of these videos. You guys got to make sure you subscribe. You guys know we cover the entire NFL. I'm a Dolphins family. We got Broncos, Washington football team, Bears, Rams. We got everybody up in here, man. So I always try to keep the conversations interesting. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. God bless. Have a good night. And wash your dirty, nasty hands. Peace. More fire for your head top.